Ryan Jackson here. Today we're going to be talking about high leg connected systems, uh, theory and NEC requirements. All right, so a high leg delta. Um, first thing we need to understand is that it is a delta. Uh, there's no such thing as a high leg on a Y connected system. And what we're looking at here is obviously a delta connected transformer. And what makes this thing uh, a high leg is the grounding configuration. Uh, if we have a delta connected transformer, we can connect it in three different ways. We can have an ungrounded system, which is where, uh, as it sounds like, the system windings, the transformer windings, are not connected to earth at all. Uh, those are pretty rare. Uh, you could also have a corner grounded system, and that's where we take a corner, pick a phase, and we connect it to the earth and to the metal parts. Or we can have a high leg system, and that's what we have here. And that's where we take the middle of one of the phases, and we connect it to the earth and also to the metal parts, and that creates a neutral point. So what we're looking at here is a high leg delta system. And the problem with the high leg system is the voltages are a bit unusual. Uh, you know, if we think in terms just of triangles, not transformers, but just triangles, if these three points are equally spaced apart and they're 240 inches or miles or feet or centimeters or whatever you want to use, if they're all 240 widgets away from each other and we take the center one of those and we bisect it and we just draw a line right in the middle, then we know that it's going to be 120 from either of these points to that point. So if we're going back to transformers, we take the center of that phase and we connect it to the earth and we connect it to the metal parts. And then that way from this point or that point measured to the center, it's 120 volts. Now, if I have a three phase piece of equipment, uh, you know, or, or I snap in a three pole breaker and I use all three conductors, then no matter which two points you put your voltage meter on, you're going to read 240 volts, right? Because between any two phases or any three lines, it's going to be 240 volts. It's just when I have a neutral conductor that things get a little bit unusual. If I take my neutral, uh, my, my meter, and I connect it to the neutral, and I read voltage to one line, I'm going to get 120. I'm also going to get 120 to a different line. But what voltage would I get from this opposite point up here in the top. And that point is what we call the high leg. And the reason we call it the high leg is because you're going to get 208 volts. Now, we could go through the math here and, uh, and figure out exactly how we got 208 volts. But you know, the fact of the matter is we, we would just do Pythagorean theorem. We take our right triangle and we would use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We would use uh, 120 volts for A. We don't know what B is, that's what we're trying to figure out. And we would use C, the hypotenuse, at 240 volts. And you can see the math here. It's going to yield 208 volts to the high leg phase. And that's what makes this system unusual. And that's what makes it a dangerous system if you don't know that it's 208 to one of the two phases, to one of the three phases, excuse me. So connecting things to the high leg uh, unfortunately is a good way to wipe out equipment if you think you're getting 120 volts because you'll be getting 208. Now you can use two pole or three pole breakers throughout a high leg system and it won't matter. It's when I'm using single pole breakers and I'm wanting 120 volts, that's where I need to be careful because two of the three will give me 120, the other one's going to give me 208. Now how do I know that I have a high leg system? How do I know that I'm working on one? Well there's a few different ways. Uh, we've got different coloring configurations that we're supposed to use, but I don't trust people. I don't, I don't trust colors. I only trust what my multimeter says. But if I wanted to, to look at the transformer outside, if it's a pole mounted transformer, a lot of times you can see that one winding, one line is a lot bigger than the other two. And if you go back, that kind of makes sense. If these are my three transformers connected in a delta and the center of one of them is connected to the earth, I'm probably going to have a lot more load on this phase down here, aren't I? Because all of my 120 volt stuff is going to come off of that one. So if I have three phase equipment, then of course all three phases are going to be loaded equally. 
But if I've got any 120 volt loads in my system, if all I have to my building is 120, 240 delta, then all of my 120 is going to be coming off of that phase. So when you see three transformers, one of which is significantly bigger, that's because that one is going to get loaded uh, heavier than the other two. So it kind of makes sense. We can also get a high leg delta off of what we would call an open delta. And that's where we only have two transformer windings. So looking at this, I've got two transformer windings. If you're looking at it uh, in the real world, you would expect to see something like this, where we have only two transformers on the pole, one of which is substantially larger than the other one. And if we go back, I can operate three-phase equipment on this system that only has two transformers because I could connect from this point to this point, or I could connect from this point to that point, and I still could connect from this point to that point. So I can use three-phase equipment even though I have only have uh, two transformers on the system, and we would call that an open delta as opposed to a closed delta. Either one, perfectly fine. Take a peek outside, look at what your transformer looks like. If you see only two transformers, uh, you're going to have a high leg or an open delta. Now with an open delta, that could be a corner grounded open delta as well, although that is extremely unusual. Usually if you look outside and you've only got two transformers, one of which is significantly larger, you've got yourself an open high leg delta system. All right, let's take a look at some of the code requirements in the NEC. Starting with 110.15, high leg marking. On a four wire delta connected system where the midpoint of one phase is grounded. Okay, so let's just stop right there. That's talking about a high leg system, right? It's a four wire delta. So right off the bat, four wire delta is only going to be a high leg system because an ungrounded delta is a three wire delta. A corner grounded delta is a three wire delta. The only way I'm going to get a four wire delta is if I ground the middle point of one phase and create a high leg. So if I have a high leg, right, the midpoint of one of the phases is grounded, then the conductor with the higher voltage to ground must be marked orange or by other effective means. And that's what we're looking at here. And this is probably the most common uh, coloring system used for high legs in the United States, where we would use white for the neutral, and then we would use black and blue for phases A and C, and then orange for the high leg phase, which we would normally be putting on B. So this is a very standard coloring system. Now, the code does not tell you what colors to use for the other two phases. Uh, it could be purple, orange, and yellow, or something unusual like that. So we only talk about orange, and, and if you read this carefully, it says it has to be marked orange or another effective means. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be orange. And that's why I tell people, always use your meter. Never trust the colors of the wires. You and I looking at this photograph, we cannot possibly know what the voltage of that system is. Uh, if I had to make a guess, I would say that's a 120-240 four-wire three-phase high leg delta. But I would not put my life on the line before I put a meter on it. So always make sure we're measuring voltage to make sure that the voltage is what we think it is. It's also worth noting that using orange is not limited to a high leg system. So if I want to use orange for something else, you can. And of course, it's very common here in the States for uh, 277, 480 to use brown, orange, yellow. So looking at this picture, brown, orange, yellow, that's probably 480. Who knows? But that's probably what it is. Uh, so can I use orange for something that's not the high leg? Absolutely. It just says, look, if you have a high leg, it has to be orange or other effective means. So could I use red for the high leg system? Well, I guess if you're in an application where that's going to be more effective than orange, sure. What if I have a building that has 12208 and it has 277480 already in it and then the customer buys a three-phase 240 volt piece of equipment 
Now, I guess there's a couple of ways we could handle this as an electrician. We could just use an auto transformer, a buck boost transformer, and come out of the 208 volt panel and, and you know boost it up to 240 for that piece of equipment. But what if he's got several pieces of three phase 240 volt equipment? We might actually want to establish a new 240 volt delta system. And I, I've seen that on new construction. You know, most people think of high legs only as something that was around in the 50s and earlier, and, and that's simply not the case. You can still run into them and you can still install a high leg system. So I've got a building where we're using black, red, blue, white for our 12208, and we're using brown, orange, yellow, gray for our 277480. And now I'm adding a high leg system. Would using orange for the high leg really be the most effective method of identifying it? I don't know. You could debate it. You could say, well, I'm going to use black, orange, blue, and some people know what that means and other people don't. Maybe instead you decide to use black, purple, blue, something that you're not already using, or pink, or something that's unusual, you know, or pink with orange stripes, something that's strange. That might be more effective than just using orange. So the code doesn't paint itself into a corner here. It says, look, orange is probably the best approach, but it might not always be the best approach. So it leaves a way out, orange or other effective means. Now, interestingly enough, you only have to identify the high leg orange at terminations where the neutral is also present. So if all I'm doing is going through a three-phase disconnect and feeding a three-phase motor and I don't have a neutral, then I don't have to mark it orange. Now, I think it would be a good idea to mark it orange, but why are we so concerned about knowing that that wire is the high leg? Remember, for a three-phase motor, the motor doesn't care which wire the high leg is because it's a line-to-line-to-line -to -line -to -line connection. It, it, it doesn't mind having the high leg on phase A, B, or C. Why is it so important that everybody know that it's the high leg? Well, because I don't want anybody making a connection to it and the neutral and getting 208 when they thought they were getting 120. If I don't have a neutral in the box, then that's not possible. So we don't have to tell people which leg is the high leg system. Now, that's the theory, that's the code requirement. Uh, I would tell you that I think it would be cool of you to just tape it orange at all points. You know, I, I'm not into surprises, and I, I think having, uh, you know, letting people know what this system is, is a good thing. I also want to point out that, you know, we talked about how do you know you have a high leg system. Well, look outside of your transformer. If it's pole mounted, you see the two transformers or the three transformers, and one's bigger. If you start seeing orange a lot, then that should be a good indicator that perhaps you got a high leg. Or if you walk up to a panel board, and it's missing every third breaker. Now, this one, I, I love what they did here. They've got a warning label on it telling us that it's a high leg, and then on their panel fillers, on their little blanks, they actually write the words high leg on there. It's kind of hard to see, but they actually write it on the, uh, on the label itself. So, very nice of the electrician. That's not something you're usually going to see, however. So, here's something to remember. If you walk up to a panel board, and it's missing every third breaker, that is a very good indicator that you have a high leg system. So don't think that it's your lucky day, right? I, I know if, if I'm doing a service call and I see a panel board and it's missing every third breaker, initially you might be thinking, all right, I've got all sorts of space here in this panel. Uh, no, you don't. Remember, if you're missing every third breaker, just remember what Admiral Akbar says. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. Stay away from that panel. Some of the other code rules. 408.3 E1. So 408, of course, is switchboards, panel boards, and switch gear. So we have some rules for those. So this wouldn't apply to like a fuse disconnect, right? Because we're in article 408. We're supplied by a three phase, four wire, delta connected system the B phase must be the high leg. All right, perfect. So looking at this panel board, it's clearly marked on there that the high leg is the B phase. So this appears to be compliant. Perfect, we put it on the B phase. But I do want to warn you, that's not always the way it works. Uh, the utility will often install the high leg on phase C. So make sure you're checking things before you energize them. 
Uh, you might wire it all on phase B, and then the utility puts it on phase C, and you might end up wipe, wiping out your 120 volt equipment when you shoot 208 volts into it. So be mindful of that. Uh, why do the utilities put it on phase C? Well, from my understanding, uh, at least on some meters, when they have a three phase meter like this, uh, it, it requires a, a 120 volt connection somewhere. The, the meter is looking for 120 volts and it's looking for it on phase B. So they can't put the high leg on phase B because they would wipe out the meter. So they have to put it on phase A or C. They always seem to choose C. And then we would need to flip it and make it on phase B. So again, just be mindful of that. Uh, if you're doing a service change, this is something to be extremely careful about because before 1975, the high leg was on the C phase throughout the building. So you didn't see it on the B phase, you saw it on the C phase. So if we're doing a service change, I might be taking out an old system and replacing it with new. And of course we know that now the code requires it to be on the B phase. So the utility brings it in on the C phase. You change it over to the B phase. Well, did you change all of the stuff inside the building too? If you didn't, you're going to be wiping out all of the equipment. So if you're doing the service change, put it on the C phase, right? And label it, warn people, but put it on the C phase. Otherwise, you're going to be wiping out everything. So put it back the way it was when you found it. And any rational inspector, if you explain why you did that, uh, they're going to recognize that that's the only safe way that you can do a service change on a high leg delta, unless you're rewiring the entire building. Now, I say that it was supposed to be on the C phase, but again, don't trust colors. Don't trust people. You know, looking at this panel board, this is a high leg. Look at, look at the breakers missing, right? Every third breaker is missing. So we know it's a trap. So every third breaker is missing. But look at where the orange wires are. Up here on top, it's on phase C. Down here, it's on phase A. This one is on phase B. So. Again, to reiterate, don't trust colors, trust your meter. Make sure you're not blowing something up. 408.3F also has a rule that I think is great. And unfortunately, it's, it's relatively new to the code. I think they put this in back in 2008, maybe 2005. It says, listen, if a high leg is present, the panel board switchboard or switch gear must be marked caution. Blank phase has blank volts to ground which I think is a great requirement. So looking at this panel, it's on the C phase. Now, is that a violation? Well, I guess it depends on when this panel was installed. If it was installed after 1975, it should have been on the B phase. Now, I took this picture and I can tell you that this was not installed before 75. This is an older panel and it was on the C phase. So they put the sticker on it that says, caution, C phase has 208, 208 volts to ground. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the B phase. It could be A or it could be C. Whichever one it is, we need to mark it. And whatever the voltage is, we need to mark it. I've never seen it with my own two eyes, but you can do a high leg at 480. Uh, it, it would be very unusual, but you would wire it up the exact same. So you would have a 480 volt delta and you would get 240 between the, uh, between the two phases to neutral and then you'd get 277 on the other one, which would be you know, pretty unusual. In fact, I better check that. I wonder if it actually would be 277 before I commit to that. We're going to push pause. One eternity later. Okay, glad I checked that. As I clearly said, it's not 277, it's 415. <laughs> so, if you had a 480 volt high leg delta, which again, I've never seen, I've heard of it uh, once or twice, they're extremely rare. Uh, if you had that, then you would mark caution B phase has 415 volts to ground. So that's how you would uh, mark it. In, no in most applications, though, we're simply going to mark it caution B phase has 208 volts to ground. 240.85 is probably the last rule that we're going to talk about for high leg systems. Uh, and this is quite important. Uh, when you read it, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to unpack. There's a lot of information here. It says a breaker with only one voltage rating, which I call a straight rating, like 240. Not 120 slash 240, just 240. 
that could be used in any system that does not exceed that voltage rating between any two conductors. Okay, so could you use this in your house? Well, yeah, of course. You, you don't have any voltage higher than 240 in your house, and every part of that breaker is rated 240 volts. Um, could I put that on a high leg system? Sure, right? Because I would get 240 line to line, I would get 120 line to ground on two of the phases, and I would get 208 volts line to ground on the third phase. Where you have to be careful is if you use a slash rated breaker, 120 slash 240. And by the way, if you go to the parts store and you buy a two pole breaker, this is what you're going to get. Unless you specify otherwise, you're going to get a 120 slash 240 volt rated breaker. And we have to be very careful using this on a high leg system. So a breaker with two voltage ratings, slash rating, 120 slash 240, is only allowed where the line to neutral voltage does not exceed the lower rating and the line to line voltage does not exceed the higher rating. Can you use this in your house? Sure. You're going to have 12240 in your house, so go ahead and use that. Can you use that on a high leg delta? Well, not on the B phase because the B phase is what? 208 volts line to neutral and this is only rated 120 volts line to neutral. It's rated 240 volts line to line. 120 line to neutral. So you could put this on the A phase and the C phase, but you could not put it on the B phase. So what you'll often see in a high leg delta is a panel like this. You've got your two pole breaker. Now, if it was rated straight 240 volts, I could put that wherever I wanted. And then you've got your single pole breakers, which are going to be on phases A and phase C, but never on phase B, right? This breaker is only rated 120 slash 240 because I didn't specify otherwise and I, I got it from the parts store and that's what they gave me. So I'm going to have to avoid using the high leg in that application. Now on a three pole breaker, um, I believe every three pole breaker is straight rated. I think that's part of uh, UL 489, the product standard, that they have to be just straight rated. But for a two pole, uh, they come in both flavors, 120 slash 240 and just 240. So if you have a high leg delta, either don't use the high leg delta for other than three phase loads, or make sure you have a straight rated breaker and then you can put it on whichever phases you want. So there you go. If you ever uh, run up against a high leg delta, now you know what to do and you know what to look out for. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you're all doing as well as you possibly can be. And uh, please be safe out there. Thanks, everybody. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.